Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So guys, I've been working on Cinema 4D, After Effects. Not that I didn't know this stuff. I'm trying to brush up on my chops, my skills, take things to another level. And yeah, so I, I did a, an audio effector study, both in uh, Cinema 4D and After Effects. And I came up with this. Let me go ahead and press play. So this is not all done in Cinema 4D. In fact, the only thing done in Cinema 4D is that EQ, right? Which it's not a real EQ. It's uh, basically a, a cube that is then thrown into a cl cloner and animated with the sound effector, right? The spheres, the background, the text, etc., was all done in After Effects. And for sure, to do this EQ, because there's no camera move, would have been way easier to do in After Effects but I'm just trying to get a handle on the sound effector and MoGraph in particular, right? So let's switch over to the picture viewer. Oh, and by the way, there are two EQs here. The bottom one is basically the cloner flipped upside down, exported it in, and then inside of After Effects, I added a mask and I mask out some of the bottom of the cloner, right? So I'm gonna switch over to After Effects, show you this picture viewer, and you'll see this is different, right? I was playing around, I added a floor with a reflective surface, and you'll see that this right here is 29 seconds to render. So I imagine it actually would have taken quite a bit longer to do it this way because on average it was 25 seconds of frame with both cloners. So uh, yeah, and the 62 seconds or whatever I ended up rendering that you can see on Instagram was, uh, <laughs> it took 11 hours. So uh, <laughs> and that has nothing to do with the After Effects time. Anyways, let me close this out, show you the project. You see there's a light here. This is not, it doesn't show up in the render. In fact, there's a couple. I didn't use the other lights. There's a background of floor. There's two sound effectors. There's a random effector and two cloners, right? So let me just go ahead and press play here. Looking cool. Why don't we just press Command N on our keyboard and let's start with a new project and see where we get, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and open up or add a cube to my scene. I'm gonna change the size of this cube to 20 centimeters by 20 by 20, right? After I do that, uh, one of the things we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna change the anchor point of this cube because if we don't and we add the audio effector, it's going to affect uh, basically in the up and down position because right now uh, we just wanted to go up but the thing is the anchor point is in the center of this cube in order to change the anchor point we want to select the cube press c on our keyboard or click on this button right here to make it editable after we do that we can come over here to mesh select access center select access center again and go y to minus 100 and click on execute i don't know if you saw that i'm gonna press command z on my keyboard to undo watch right here where these uh, arrows are emanating from when i click execute boom now it's at the bottom in the center i'll go ahead and close this out the next thing we want to do is have the cube selected come up to MoGraph and select cloner. After we do that, we're going to take the cube, drop it in the cloner, and boom, we now have three cu cubes. This is not the look we're going for. We do want it to be linear, but we don't want it to be going up in the Y axis. So we'll come over here to Y, we'll select zero, and remember, we had the cube at 20 centimeters, so we're going to select the X axis of being 21. Next, we're going to bump this up to, I don't know, 30. Pick whatever number you want. And obviously, the reason I set 21 here is adding an extra centimeter so there's a little space between these cubes. Next, on my keyboard, I'm going to press the number 3 on my number pad and click with my mouse to drag this to get it to line up, something like that. Pressing 1 and dragging. I'll bring it over here, and we're trying to line this up, something to this effect. Obviously, you could do that right here with these buttons. Easier on your number pad, so do as you wish. Pressing number two and pressing up does this. Pressing number one, we can bring it down. I don't know, something like this for now. Next, if we press play on our keyboard, nothing happens, right? That's because we don't have an effector to this cloner. If we click on the cloner, come up to MoGraph, select Effector, and go down to Sound, boom, now we can affect it, huh? With the Sound Effector selected, if we come over here to Effector, the first thing we wanna do is load a soundtrack. Click on this button, select Load, and find a sound file on your computer to load. This track, Dan McKay, Good Call, is from the owner of 33 Music, the label owner. It's a buddy of mine. Thanks for letting me use the track, Dan. And yeah, the information, if you're interested in buying the track, will be in the description of the video file. Next, if we press play right now, 
you'll see these cubes are bouncing, right? Not exactly to the beat, but then again, we're not exactly here on the waveform of the kick drum. If we play this, you'll see this is the dominant area right here. This is the kick drum. So if we just drag this over, for example, something like this, and we press play, now you'll notice that this is bouncing, right? The next thing, the 90 frames, definitely not enough. I'm not planning to render this out when I finish uh, the tutorial, so I'll set it to 1759, which is 1800 frames if you include uh, frame zero, and 1800 frames at a 30 frame per second project is exactly a minute, guys. So next, now that we have this selected, if we bring this out, uh, well, it's going to include more of the frequencies. If we go back to the beginning and press play, Cool, it's including more of the frequencies, but what is that doing for us? It's not doing much. So if we scroll down here and we change the sampling from peak to step, now we'll see. This is like when I do the worm at a party, right? And I'm breaking. <laughs> anyway, so we got something going on here. This is pretty cool, but what's being affected is not what we want. We'll switch over to parameter. We're going to uncheck position because right now it's basically making these cubes bounce up to 50 centimeters in the Y position based on the uh, frequencies that are selected here, right? We'll come back over to parameter, we'll uncheck position, we'll select scale, and we're gonna say, you know what, I want you to dance here in the Y. So we'll press five, for example, press enter, boom. Next, let's press H on our keyboard, which will recenter this object, and let's get this just a little bit better. I don't know, I'm so anal about this, right? Now, obviously, the smart thing would be for me to add a camera, and if I added a camera, then you could always press Command Shift Z to go back to the last camera view, right? So actually, let's do that instead of me just talking about it. <laughs> I'm gonna press this button right here. That looks good. We're gonna set this something to that effect, 50 millimeter. All right, all right, all right. Back to the sound effector over here in the menu. And uh, yeah, all is looking good, right? If we press play, all is looking good. So next thing that we want to do is uh, we want to change some things that are happening here. You know, like I like this. And in fact, this looks, if you if we come back over here to the effector, this looks kind of like what's going on here in our spectrum. In fact, if we go ahead and drag this down, then this is going to basically look like the EQ, right? So I'll go back to the beginning, press start. And if you look right here, this is basically what's happening this is basically what's happening in this selection. So if you want it to be realistic, then you're gonna wanna include this much of the information, right? Now, obviously, one of the issues that we have here, if we come over here to the sound and the parameter, is we are only going up max by five. So when this is very low over here, what's happening? It's not moving up by much. That's why this is not really moving, right? The other thing that we could do, we can come to the effect. So it depends how real you want it to be. If we come here and we drag this up and maybe, I don't know, it doesn't have to be all of this, something like that. And then we go ahead and press play, looking good. Okay, something like that. Maybe another thing is we say, we don't care if it looks realistic. So we have the cloner selected, we come up to MoGraph, select the effector, and then come over to random. Now when we do that, now it's gone out of its mind crazy and it's not doing what we wanna do. But that's because if you click on parameter here, again, it's uh, changing the position at random. We don't want that. Let's select scale and in the Y, let's add a one and boom. It's also not doing what we want, right? So if I press play, you see like, hey, what's going on? And you sing it, what's going on? Anyway, so one of the things we wanna select is absolute scale. Now when we click it, now this thing is dancing, right? And that's what we want it to be doing. Granted, this is not accurate, but that's okay, huh? Because this is what uh, we wanted to go for for this example. Again, if you don't, if you want this to be accurate, get rid of the random. You could always come back into the sound effector under parameters and bump this up right here. Another thing that you can do is come over to the effector. If you drop this down, for example, let me turn off random and I play this. This is basically showing you everything that's here. So obviously the higher you go, but in right now it's all basic bass and some uh, low level instruments, etc. Let's go ahead and drag this out so our timeline's longer. And so I like that. I'm gonna bring it up because I don't like that these are peeking out over here. Plus I'm gonna turn the random on because I'm crazy like that. I'll press play. 
All right, so what if you wanted some of these to be affected more than others? What we could do is come over here to the uh, sound uh, effector and we can press command on our keyboard and click and drag it down. Now we've made a duplicate. If I come over here and say sound extra, that's cool. But one thing we have to do is go into the cloner, select effectors, and look, sound extra is not there. So let's put sound uh, extra in there. Now what's happening is sound extra is basically going crazy uh, and doubling all of the other efforts, right? So that's crazy. That's not what we were going for. Let's come over here to fall off under sound extra and come over here to this box and select spherical field. If we select that, this is not what we wanted. We're trying to get that little handle to move this. If we move this as we're playing, now I won't be talking. I'm just going to show you as I move this, this is going to affect things. Uh, this is going to limit the effect of sound extra, right? So you'll notice, depending on where this is, it is giving that extra from sound extra, right? A couple things we can do. Number one, the size of this thing. Granted, we can come here and move it around, right? But we could also change the size. Maybe we drop this to 60%. Maybe we bring this down. Maybe we bring this over here to the uh, to the low end. Next, and we can call this sound field, uh, oops, we could just call this low. Right. Next, if we come over to sound extra and come back here, click on spherical and come to spherical field again, we can come and find this drag handle, bring it over, maybe leave this large and then press play. Let's see what it looks like. One of the things we're seeing is this is going crazy, right? So number one, press uh, command shift Z to bring back the view that we had because we have a camera in the scene that we're looking through, which is amazing. <laughs> anyway, so we can drop this down maybe. If we drop this down, it will affect it less. Next, if we come over here to the uh, parameters, number one in this uh, sound extra, maybe this is way too much. Let's drop this to three, huh? And let's come over here to the original sound effector and drop this down to three. Now it's becoming more manual. I'll go ahead and press play. So maybe that's nice, right? And if we come over here to the low end, maybe we bring this down a little bit, right? Now this is looking legit, right? And again, this top end, maybe we bring this uh, down a little bit, something like that. It's really, uh, it's it's got a, a sharp cutoff, right? So maybe one way that we can do to change this is not to necessarily bring that up, but maybe change the size of it, right? which obviously if we have this selected, we can come over here to size and change this to, I don't know, 60. Or maybe that's too low, 80, something like this. Or maybe we go even up to 200. Well, can you not go past 100? Boom, we cannot go past 100. So, okay, makes sense. Let's just set it to 80. Let's press play. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. All right, so let's color this thing. I apologize, I had a brain fart, I had to restart. I'm gonna double click here in my materials to create a new material. After loading this material, I'll go ahead and double click. I'll come over here to my reflectance. I'll def delete the default specular, huh? In color, I'm gonna go ahead and select that channel. I'm gonna select the texture, click on the, the arrow right here, and we're gonna load a gradient. In the gradient, we'll click on the gradient and we'll switch it from the type to 2DU to 2DV. So it's going up and down. Next, I'll click on this arrow next to the word gradient and I'll come down to load preset. Under loads preset, I'll select uh, all of the colors, full colors, right? So it's looking pretty cool. Uh, next thing that we want to do is we want to click and drag this onto the cloner. Right click on the material tag and say fit to object. Say yes, boom. Next. We're going to click on the up arrow within this, or if you had already closed it, just double click on it again, come over to the color channel, on the arrow next to the texture, we'll click on that and let's load a layer. We'll click on this button that says layer, and under layer, we're going to click on effect, distort, and we're going to change it from noise. It's up to you what you want to do, but just to give it another look, to Vor Voronoi 2, after doing so, I'll bump up that scale from 100% to 200%, and voila. Looking good. One other thing we can do, you don't have to do this. Instead of going here and dialing in a reflectance channel, I don't have all these materials down yet. I'll come over here to plugins. I'll select top coat. 
Uh, top coat is a cool plugin to add quick reflectance to a, a material. I'll click on this material, click on lacquer, and boom. Look at that reflection channel. It added immediately. I'll close this out. I'll close this. Looking good. If we press Command R on our keyboard, yeah, not too shabby, right? The other thing is if we come over here, let's make sure everything is okay. It's looking good. We want to go ahead and add a floor. We'll click on this button right here, select floor, and boom. Next, we want to drag this down so it is underneath our objects. Cool. We have to make a material for this floor. So we'll go over here, double click. We'll add the new material. We'll double click on the material. And we are going to, uh, what are we going to do here? We are going to turn off the color channel. We'll come into the reflectance. We'll de delete the default specular. We'll click on add. We'll select Fong. And after we add Fong, we'll scroll down to layer fre fre Fresnel and we'll change this to dielectric. Boom. Just that. If we press Command R on our keyboard, we're looking good. But we need a light to see that reflection, right? In fact, for this to look good, period. Also, we probably need to drag the material onto the floor. <laughs> I'll press Command R. We can see it actually without the light. It's looking all right. Next, we want to go ahead and add a light anyway, right? So you can add a regular light. I have the Grayscale Gorilla uh, Light Kit Pro. If we click on this, it adds a softbox. In order to position the softbox, we can come over here to POV placement, click on it, and then it takes us into a camera view. This allows us to position the target of the light based on where this puppy is, right? Look at those reflections, looking nice. I'll come out a little bit, something like this. That's where we want the light to be uh, focused at. I'll click on POV uh, placement again to come out. And perfect. Where did you go? Huh? Oh, you know what's happening? Right now we're seeing the light. So if we come over here to pitch and we click and drag this up, we're taking it out of our view a bit. And that's what we want to do. Next, the other thing that we probably want to do is we want to not see this when we render. If we click on advanced right here and turn off scene by camera, that's all we had to do. Back over in the light, we probably want to bump this up a little. If we press command R, we're going to see what it looks like right now. It's looking all right, but it's not bright enough, right? So let's go ahead to the master intensity bump that up to 250, press command R on our keyboard, and it's looking a lot better. And anyways, this could even go further, right? Maybe 350. Let's also make sure that this position is correct. And if we go ahead, we could even create a null object, for example. If we click on, I'm sorry, come over here and we select null object and we bring this into the center right there. Now this is in the center of this, more or less, and we can come over into the soft box and in this target object, we can drop the, uh, the null and boom, now it's pointed at that. Right? We can pitch this, uh, pitch this up a little bit more, get it a little bit more out of our view. Or we don't even have to do that, huh? The other thing that we can do is change the, rend uh, the viewport mode from detailed to minimal, and this will make a wireframe, and then we can see easier. I'll press Command R on my keyboard to render, and it's looking sexy. In fact, maybe this is too bright, right? Because right here, it's getting blown out. Let's drop this to 275, press Enter, press Command R on our keyboard. Bada bing, bada boom. We still have to drop it. This is still too high. Let's drop this to 200, huh? Press Command R. It's looking all right, but it's still problematic, huh? So maybe what we could do is change this distance from 627, let's put it at 350. Let's change this intensity to 150, press Command R. What is it looking like? Boom, that is looking a whole lot better. If I go ahead and bring myself back to the beginning of my timeline, press play. Boom, looking good. I'll go ahead and render this to the picture viewer just so you can see what we've got. And it looks quite sexy, huh, guys? Uh, guys, I hope you liked this tutorial. You found it useful. If you did, please like, please share, please subscribe. It means the world. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. I will try to answer if they are asked anytime around when this video is uploaded. If you watch this video two years from now and ask me a question, I'm sorry. I don't ask you questions from the past, right? Anyways, guys, uh, the next tutorial I will be doing will be in After Effects to show you how to use the audio effector there. Uh, not the audio effector. The sound keys from Red Giant on how to affect things, etc. All right, guys. Until next time, I'm out.